thank you very much sir uh, for giving us this opportunity to be part of this panel uh, i hail from a company which has been uh, uh, into the network security and the the logical uh, security controls for last 18 years and uh, the innovation of the company or the, the the genesis of the company belongs to the country which is known for the best uh, security be it physical or the logical so we are a israeli company so as the roots and uh, the ceo is the one who was actually the the army captain and then uh, colonel and then became the, the the software developer for writing the first code for the firewall uh so before i uh, talk about uh, in next 5 uh, 10 minutes about the logical security a couple of points i'd like to touch upon from the previous speakers uh all of us have established the facts that you know be it the ict in the uh, uh, police or ict into any other egov project or ict into any enterprise projects what we are seeing is that the information uh is changing from time to time and the gradient of this change is becoming much more bigger uh, in, in the current state of affairs and in such instance you know security is a very important or a fundamental need of any business but there is a uh, you know uh, the, the the sordid legacy that uh, the security in any project is a very small proportion of the the budget when it comes to the the to the, the project so it always takes a a uh, a secondary or a back seat when it is uh, you know decided in any project in the terms that yes it gets a part of a turnkey project rather than being a niche specific area or a subject of discussion so what i'll do is i'll just talk about uh, the precursor of any security definition we have two important uh, triads let's simplify uh, the security objective one is an asset and the other is the threat and and what we have to do is protect the asset from the threat and as much artificial intelligence we can build around understanding the the vectors or the the way the patterns of the threat can uh, uh, compromise or can attack on the asset is what is going to define our risk attributes and let me tell you once we have a risk attribute the security decisions or the security controls can always be positioned and where we fail as as the ecosystem is defining the risk attributes and that's why the incidents or the 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 events happen with it becoming the uh, the the core of any ict project and the popularity and the proliferation of ict happening asset is always going to have the uh, threat landscape and that's what i am going to talk about in the next few slides so let's understand the asset asset few years back or age old back you know was being termed either as a information which was written in diaries or later on on the large pcs and then small palm dobs and whatever it is and the infrastructure which could be the uh, you know diagrammatically shown here as a safe or a um, um, uh, the 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 tape drives or the hard disk in the big big mainframes and etc and what is happening is a big transition in the both formats one there are the the the, the carriers or the the devices which interact or the touch points of the information are changing and they are changing to become the gadgets of the current day and i am sure that whether we go to the police station today or we go to the any other ict organizations far apart from the enterprises most of these gadgets are seen these days you know whether it's blackberries whether it is uh, any uh, palm tops or handle devices or the uh, you know recent uh, surveys has suggested that last year itself 235 million uh mobile devices have been seen and current year is projecting around 450 to 460 million devices so this is what is the proliferation of these changing trends and the infrastructure is no more restricted to the data centers or to the specific uh places but it's move on to the cloud and when this is the changing definition of the asset on the uh, parallel side of the threat the threat is also changing its shape one it is becoming polymorphic which means it's becoming complex it's no more atomic it changes its variance with with time it changes uh, it it flashes uh, so fast and so on and so forth similarly uh, the vectors of the threat are changing what do we mean by vector previously it used to propagate as a attack or a code over the wire now the vectors are changing the vectors are becoming people who are interacting 
and can have the information leakage possibilities and so on and so forth. The vectors are becoming the social networking sites because even if you see the articles today I was reading in the magazines, you know, many, many government uh, agencies including police stations are joining Facebook. So this is a new revolution, you know, we are talking about. So all these vectors are getting added. The objectives are changing, you know, the objectives of attacking is no more to in, in, enjoy the intellectual intelligence but to, in, to get actually the fraud or to, to make the other organizations lose money, be it money laundering, be it related to any other activities for that matter. And finally, you know, let's not forget the state-sponsored criminals, you know, who are actually targeting the government sites. We've seen, uh, you know, Kapil Sibyl also talking about that when the infrastructure gets into the digital world, you know, the governments or the other, uh, you know, enemies or whatever during the warfare, whichever you like to say, the state of affairs, are targeting that digital information over the boundaryless networks. Because all we have is the three sets of forces which we've been seeing for so many years, that is Army, Navy and Air Force, which are defining the or protecting the boundaries. But preventing a cyber warfare is no boundary protection. You know, it's beyond that. So that's what exactly is the threat landscape. And this is sourced from FBI that the current revenues which are att attached to the uh, uh, to the world of cyber uh, criminals has outnumbered the money attached or connected to the uh, uh, drug trafficking across the globe. So now this is the data which is sourced from FBI. Now this is some information on the changing vector. So when the information become digitized, you know there is a lot of potential of loss of data due to the people interacting with that information. You know, when it is in the files, when it is into the physical records, there is a physical security which can take care of this. But when it becomes logical, the logical security controls have to be appropriate, they have to be thought through, they have to have the better, or the, uh, you know, artificial intelligence which is much beyond the capabilities of the present day attackers or the hackers or the state-sponsored criminals. So these are some statistics, some number, you know, which have been sourced from different agencies. Now this is the proliferation of Web 2.0, you know, a vector which is becoming very, very common. Now people are saying that if, if, if Facebook would have been a population, it would have been third largest in the world, you know, after India and China. So that's the, that's the fact, these are the facts. And when we talk about the, the, the state of today, it is a beginning of the new era, you know, Web 2.0 era. It's not the, uh, you know, reaching a saturation point of Web 2.0. We are at the, still at the hype cycle of that. Imagine two years from now, what would be the population of Facebook and how many such Facebooks exist after two years, you know, nobody know, cannot predict. 23% of the average user time of the user spent on the net, okay, and 45% on the content on the, these sites, which are more, most hundred popular, uh, you know, popular sites, 45% of them, they contain a non-business data. And 60% of this is malware. So this is what economists say. And so on and so forth. So this is what is the, uh, uh, the, the, the side or the source story, which all of us need to be aware of. And trust me, I'll, I'll, the simplified or a best definition for a security can be given if you bring the world of uncertainty to the world of certainty and that's what is defined as security. Nobody was certain, nobody would have ever imagined when the first flight hit the World Trade Center, you know, in the history of human civilization, that this could be one way of, uh, you know, terrorist activity which can be seen by the world. But once we have seen that, there is no reputation so far. We are all lucky, but, but that's what is the bringing the certainty to the world which was never known earlier. And that's what is the definition of security, that let's become certain. So in next two slides, I'll, or three slides, I'll finish this. Once we have understood the, the assets are changing their shape, the threats are uh, changing their uh, formats, uh, how these threats propagate, let us understand. Uh, you know, the, this is an age-old method, viruses, they propagate as an execution file or something like that. But this is becoming a very powerful tool for the, the attackers or the people who want to compromise the digital security. Because this is the most popular way of interacting today, be it, be it a, a laptop or a, a dock station or a kiosk in any state, browser is the most powerful tool today and it's going to be the most powerful tool of tomorrow also. And that's what exactly is defining the problems, uh, you know, the most common or the most proliferating problems happening in this. So this is a very important channel and this channel is becoming more and more, you know, showing its face. 
wherein the P2P channels like Facebook, Twitter and many other are being used to, to, to compromise the security. So this is what we have understood now from a propagation point of view. So what these propagation uh, mechanisms or channels, they target, the end point they target is the vulnerabilities which exist in the system. So all of us, we need to come to a situation wherein when we are designing this security framework for any ICT project, it has to be the, the core, it has to exist in the core of the design, wherein we have to build up from preventing to the putting the right appropriate controls. Rather, it should not be seen as, you know, the part of a turnkey solution wherein security comes as a bundle turnkey project and it's not being thought through. So what are the key success attributes? Any project which we are taking, we should be able to define the policies which are simple, closer to the business. That's what should be the characteristics of the solution and it, they should be enforceable. Then we have to strengthen the weakest links. And who are the weakest links? This is the weakest link. How to strengthen it? Making user train, that's the first step. Then making the user aware about the policies. So there is a continuous awareness programs. And the last but not the least, the need of the time today is not just leaving at the awareness, but engaging with the user. So if I see the former speakers' presentations, you know, they are, they are moving step forward from training and they are making the people engage. They are making, they are collecting the plebiscite from different officers that how do you see this technology changing the, the turn for you. So that's what exactly we mean by making this users. And last but not the least, my last slide, we need to bring a situational visibility. And I'm sure that everybody has spoken about this in the previous contexts also, that let's not get the data. You know, after immediately after seeing the, 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 the recent attacks in Mumbai, you know, after which most of the things have become more aggressive and all these big projects have taken a, a fast track approach. Uh, we all, you know, I have seen a footage from, I don't know which media, but wherein the, the head of the commandos, you know, he said that all what we had was data, but not the intelligence. You know, if we would have the intelligence, we would have, uh, you know, not taken this operation the longer time, you know, whatever it has actually taken. So this is what exactly is called as situational visibility. This is a similar thing which gets into the product capability. The products today are sold on their data shields. That's the, that's the uh, you know, I would say the sordid legacy. However, they have to be sold on, uh, sold on how integrated they are and how can they give me a situational visibility, which means how can they make an event into an actual information and not the data record. So I thank, uh, you know, this forum. This is just our product slide, uh, last uh, stuff, that we have all the range of products to cover. And let's secure the business process and not just get a silo solution of security uh, which comes as a you know, turnkey project along with the, uh, the larger project. Because what we have seen is that it's, the security component is hardly a 2 to 3% or maybe 5% max as a part of the security budget or a total budget of the project. And that's what actually uh, kills the, the whole uh, essence or the, the, the depth of security which is required in the uh, you know, framework. Thanks a lot.